Okay, now that we have our event graph set up for the animation blueprint, we're going to move on to the animation graph. So for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and actually I'll just disconnect the slots and move it out of the way. So what we're going to be doing is this portion here. So we want to use transform modify bone, put the BB site bone to the relative hand sock or transform that we have down here in bone space. So we right click and search for transform modify. We have transform modify bone. And we can come over here and for the translation and rotation, we want to set to replace existing. And for scale, we can leave as ignore. And for the translation space, set it to bone space and same thing for rotation. Now for the bone, that is going to be our virtual bone, so VB site. So what we can do is grab our relative hand transform, get it, split it, and link it up for the translation and the rotation. And I want to remove this scale here just so it's out of the way. So I'm going to go to scale and uncheck exposes pin just to just to move it. It's kind of annoying. Now let's move this out of the way a bit. And from here, we want to search for copy. So we want to do copy bone. That I, yeah, that is right. We can come over here, expose this pen. Just get rid of those. Link the two together. And the source bone is going to be the and underscore R. The target bone is going to be VB and underscore R. And we want to copy the translation. So compile and save that. And then next up, we want to transform the site bone again, but instead of going to the relative hand, we want to move it to the site transform that we made and in component space instead. So we're going to copy this, paste it, link these back up, and we're going to grab the site transform, split it, and connect it up just like before, except we're going to go over here and change bone space to component space. Okay. Once that's done, we can switch over and use two bone IK. So we're going to match that to our VB hand R bone. So we're going to right click, two bone IK, link it again. The IK bone is going to be the hand underscore R. Then the effector it's going to be, I believe it's bone space. Let's see, where's the, I'm being completely blind. Ah, effect target, couldn't find it. We're gonna select the virtual hand underscore R. We're gonna check take rotator from effector. So this step is essentially going to make it so when our virtual site bone gets moved into position, we're, tra we're moving the right hand along with it. So we're kind of, we're using the two together to position the site right in the center of our screen. So from there, we don't need to expose these as pins. We just leave them like so and plug it into our output pose. So let's see roughly where we are at with this setup and see what we need to do wrong or what we need to fix. So first thing, you can see the and obviously is in the complete wrong position. And one thing I actually do want to check real quick is I want to make sure this socket has the correct rotations as well. So we are off on that axis, so let's move it over by 90 so it's pointing straight out. This one is correct. And the roll should be right up at the top, which is correct. So as you can see, that alone, that influenced the position of the gun itself. So it's pointing back kind of in the opposite direction. Let's go back to first person and MVP. And I also want to do one more thing first. I want to drag out the first person idle and link that to the component pose. So that way it kind of points everything in the rightest direction, like so. So that way we have a initial pose and we can see kind of where it's going to position us. So obviously this is incorrect. 
So we have something wrong and we need to fix and kind of figure out where that might be. So make sure all these have the alpha of one. And let's see where we might have made a mistake. So I believe it is, well, no, let's see. I do not remember if that is supposed to replace. Okay, so I forgot to do one thing. Uh, in our copy bone, I set it to copy translation. However, did not set it to copy rotation. So let's set that to true. And hit play. And there you go. So you can see the site is now directly in the center of the screen. So one thing regarding the crosshair here and the first person template, that is not correct. So it's not actually positioned in the center of the screen. So if I go over to, let's see, our game mode here, where we set the HUD class, I'm going to comment that out. Control Alt 11, just to get rid of that. So that's actually the dead center of our screen. So we can test this by, let's create a uh, little widget here. Do div underscore crosshair. Let's, uh, let's see, let's add two images. So we're going to anchor them to the middle. Reset the rotation, or sorry, location. And we'll make them about like so. So we're going to do 70 and 4 for the size. Let's set the alignment to 0 0.5. Put it in the middle. Uh, let's copy and paste that. And let's do the opposite. So we're going to do 4 and 70. And set the X to be... Or we need to actually reset the position. Set the Y to be 0 0.5, and that should put it right in the center, like so. Now I'm just going to go ahead and change these to red. And this will give us a crosshair right in the center of our screen. So we need to add it. So let's go to our first person character blueprint. Let's create begin play. We're going to want to create widget. We're going to create that crosshair, and we're going to add it to the viewport. So let's see if this lines up, which it does. As you can see, it is pretty much right in the dead center. It is ever so slightly, I think, down and to the left by a tiny bit. So I'm going to thin it out just so I can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to go from 4 to, let's do 2. And set this from 70 to 50. And let's do 30. So 30 and 2. Now we can see it a little bit better. So one thing we can do to really kind of narrow this down and test it to get it as close as we can, we can lower this down to like, let's do 5. And that should bring it closer to our screen. A little too close. Do 10. And there we go. So I'm going to back it up just a tiny bit. So I'm going to do like 15. And we are ever so slightly down and left of the crosshair. Just a tiny bit. So what we want to do is let's double check our positioning of the socket. I wonder if we can go to behind. Oops, not top. Of course, that's all I can zoom in. Go figure. That's not helpful. Let's move it to the left slightly. And up a tiny bit. Actually, we need to go to the right, not up. And that is pretty much dead centered. So that's, yeah, that's just about dead center in our screen. Now, the only thing we want to do now, because as you can see, we do have some clipping. So let me reset this back to 30. I can't really see it, but you can see just at the bottom of the screen where my cursor is, we're clipping into the stock. I'm going to set the near plane, uh, the clip plane distance. So let's go to project settings. Click all settings and search for clip. And you'll have near clip plane. Let's drop this from 10. Let's just bump it down to 5. Save all, relaunch the project, 
Okay, and now we can hit play again. F11, and as you can see, the clipping is completely gone. So, we now have our IK, or just our aiming setup. So, no animations required at all. And that's going to be it for the initial set of tutorials. If you want to see the remaining, I'm, I'm obviously going to step through it here in a second of what we just did so you can confirm it. But if you want to see the rest of the tutorials where we do the exact same thing in C++, except we set it up to work obviously more feature uh, rich, such as changing between sites, interpolation so everything's smooth for aiming, as well as changing the sites, and additive animations. So when you change your site to any of them, and you go to shoot or reload, it plays an additive animation instead of completely replacing the animation you're trying to do. So that's what's all going to be done, and that's going to be available for patrons pretty much as the time of you seeing this video. And it will come to YouTube for everybody in roughly 15 to 30 days of you seeing of the release date of this video. So the last thing that I want to do, uh, what was it? Oh yeah, I want to reiterate everything we did. So let's open up our animation blueprint. Start from the event graph. So upon begin play, we want to initially set our site transform and our relative hand transform. So what these are doing in our relative hand transform, we're going to go ahead and get our optic with the socket. Let's see, uh, first print CVP, there we go. So we're basically getting right where the red dot is. It's just ever so slightly in front of it, that S underscore AM socket. So we're getting that position and we are getting the position of our right hand bone for the first person mesh. From there, we want to make sure those are relative. So this will work with pretty much any setup. Like in mine, for example, I actually spawn the firearm as a separate actor and attach it. And same thing goes for all the optics. We want to make that relative to the hand, in which case we go ahead and set that. Then for when we go to set the site, all we're doing is getting a position that is relative to our first person mesh and camera that's ever so slightly out in front of our camera. So that's going to be a position of where the site actually goes and gets lined up to. So if I bump this up to 50, for example, you will see the site is pretty far away. So he's holding it just a lot farther out there. And same thing goes, you can continue to bump this up. Like I'll try 90 and that might be a little too far. Yeah, that's a little too far. Let's bump this down to 80. Oh, let's do 65. As you can see, he's pretty much got his arm out at extension, but he's holding it in the correct position. I'm going to change that back to 30. Then now that we have that position, so pretty much we're just doing the same thing you would do for a line trace, for example. So you would get the location and rotation of where you want to start. You would get the forward vector and multiply that and that would give you a position out in front of wherever you started from. So in our case, we're starting from the relative location of the camera and the first person mesh. We are getting the forward vector so we can shoot kind of out in front of that position directly, well, directly out in front, and that we are setting for our site transform. So that's where we want the site to be. So we're using virtual bones to line that up and keep the hands at their correct positions. So obviously later on, we're going to use a a form of left hand IK to set the left hand position so it always stays on the gun, but that will be done in the uh, C++ portion, along with obviously the interpolation. So then once we can move on to the actual animation graph, I'm just going to go ahead and play an animation. So this is what it looks like without it. It's still going to go ahead and bring it there. However, as you can see, I am turned to the right because of how the stupid first person mannequin is set up, which I hate. So what I mean by that is we have the first person idle. Well, we have that, and this is the position. So it's rotated by 90 degrees, which is, I don't understand why they did that. But we can obviously fix that by uh, re-importing and altering the rotation of that animation. But for the time being, I'm not too worried about it. We are going to fix that later on because I want that to be more kind of in line with just not having to deal with that stupid 
rotation. But anyways, link that back up. But as you could, as you saw there, no matter kind of where it's at, it's going to try to position the right hand or the sight right in front of your camera where it's supposed to be. So from there, we take our right hand transform. We move our virtual bone sight or our sight bone to it. Then we want to move our right hand to match the offset of where that kind of be. So because the virtual sight bone is the parent of the virtual bone for hand underscore R, it's going to track that along with it. So we obviously, we go ahead and go through. We set our right hand bone to match that of the virtual bone for the hand underscore R. Then we move the virtual sight bone again, but this time to where the sight is supposed to be. So this is going to be right in front of our camera. And once we do that, we go ahead and just set up two bone IK between that and the virtual bone for the hand. And that moves everything in line to where the sight is now centered in the screen. So if you wanted to play something like additive animations, for example, or the left hand IK, what you would do is you would run this first because you want the positioning to be correct. And then after all this is run, you would have another section down here where you would perform the left hand IK to where you would put the left hand on the gun where you obviously want it to be. But that's going to be done, obviously, later down the road. I'm not too concerned about that at the moment. And that's something else that's going to take control when we go to actually rotate the optics. So, for example, if we have a canted sight, like let's say we have a 45 degree sight like you saw in the initial video, assuming you watched it for the example, that two hand IK for the left hand is what keeps the rotation set properly. So it follows along with the gun. If we didn't have that, the hand would still follow in the location sense, but it wouldn't track the rotation of it. So when we canted the gun, the rotation of the left hand would stay the same. It wouldn't match it, which looks unnatural, obviously. So that's something else we're going to have to do. Anyhow, that is the basics for this setup and the next videos will be patreon only for 15 to 30 days as of the release of this video after that time frame obviously as stated before they will get rolled out once a day or till the end shouldn't be that long of a series but regardless so i will see you in the next video as to whatever or whenever that may be see you then